<clears throat> By the time you view this, it's likely to be uh, much later. But while I'm uh, taping this, it's January 30th, 2019, and there's a life-threatening Arctic blast surging into the Midwest, and I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, it seems to have hit here already. We had a little bit of snow. Actually, I woke up to snow scraping this morning at 5.30, uh, which is unusual for us, and when you look out there, there's not that much snow. But... <clears throat> Why did I start off with that? The topic here is supposed to be heat shock proteins. Well, it's interesting timing. I've been um, watching a few videos on heat shock proteins. I went a little bit deeper and learned a little bit more about those. Uh, where did those uh, videos come from? Rhonda Patrick. Um, I know many of you, uh, many of my viewers also watch Dr. Patrick. Um, there was a fellow, I think it was Peter, that said, you might uh, look at a version, you might want to check out uh, Dr. Patrick. Uh, Peter was talking actually about the, the interview with Sachin Panda. I've seen that again recently and actually want to do an update on, um, on uh, time-restricted uh, eating. Uh, there was, I covered the, the article by uh, Dr. Panda and Walter Longo, but um, wanted to go into some more depth. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is, I'm a major fan of uh, Dr. Patrick. Someone else mentioned that she was a, uh, a prodigy of Dr. Bruce Ames. Uh, if you haven't heard of Bruce Ames, I did a video on him as well. He's one of the, um, the major heavy hitters on um, nutrition, sp focused on micronutrients. He did the, the triage theory of micronutrients, and again, I did a video on that. Um, he also was credited by many for the mitochond mitochondrial theory of aging. He, um, he also had a lot to do with uh, the recent discoveries of K2. So he's a uh, significant um, force in um, nutrition. And again, Dr. Patrick's... Um, a mentor, a mentee of his. Now, <clears throat> back to heat shock proteins. I'm going to cover a few items. Uh, the Wikipedia uh, section on heat shock proteins is very, very interesting, and I'm going to use that uh, a little bit later to talk about some of the details associated with um, heat shock proteins. But first, let's talk about why uh, we went there. It had to do with this. Uh, Dr. Patrick was talking in a inter couple of interviews, one with Joe Rogan and uh, I think another with, um, um, oh gosh, can't remember the name right now. But she was talking about extremes of temperature and specifically heat. Um, her point was, look, when I was going through my stressful training with Dr. Bruce Ames, uh, one of the things that really kept me sane was saunas. Um, she went on to talk about uh, heat stress has been shown to improve endurance in athletes, prevent atrophy during muscle, uh, lack of muscle use, improve insulin sensitivity, uh, increase bone-derived natriuretic factor and norepinephrine. Again, I won't get into those details right now. And it appears to be associated with um, longevity. She went on to talk about FOXO3, some other things. But why? Here's why. Uh, back in 2015, there was an article published by uh, a Dr. Lakanen and evidently someone else in his family, Jerry Lakanen, and I guess Tanjan Neela may have been his, his wife, I don't know. But they looked at, there are a couple of Finns, Finnish uh, researchers, that looked at um, sauna bathing. And they found an incredibly powerful association with uh, health. Um, <clears throat> I'll go a little bit deeper into that article later um, because I think it, it, it's sort of like um, the, uh, the review of, of Dr. Diamond's work. Um, I agree with about 95, maybe 98 percent of what I've seen so far, except I have, am withholding a little bit of uh, skepticism regarding this article. And um, we'll talk about that in another video. But before we do, let's just go back and review some of the things that we find with um, 
heat shock proteins. Um, I will say that there's been some research done uh, more recently. There does appear to be an independent association, but again, that's for another video at another time. Let's talk about heat shock proteins and why they're interesting. So there are a family of proteins uh, that are produced by uh, cells in response to stressful conditions. And so one of the things that um, they found after finding this category of uh, proteins, Researchers obviously thought the next thing. Well, what about other stressors, including cold, UV light, etc.? And sure enough, um, some of the same proteins are created, and uh, some related proteins are created. Um, so <clears throat> it makes you wonder. Well, <clears throat> if all of these things are really that healthy for you, um, why do we not see a significant? Uh, improvement in longevity in people that are that are doing things like Wim Hof with the um, cold exposure or maybe saunas. I guess one of the questions I would have is how do we know that we're not seeing that? I don't think that we do know that yet. Uh, if you're confused about the epidemiology around all-cause mortality and lifespan, I did another video on that as well. The bottom line is if you're, there are so many um, different causes of death and causes of um, shortening our lifespan that if we look at one item, it may be very important. For example, a uh, sauna may be very important. Um, you may or may not see an impact on all-cause mortality. Again, just because there are so many different ways of dying. <clears throat> but let's get back to uh, heat shock proteins. Uh, as I mentioned in the title, and I haven't gotten there yet, heat shock proteins are very much related to autophagy and other immune functions. Now, why is that? Part of it has to do with this term chaperone. Uh, chaperones are proteins that assist the covalent folding or unfolding or the assembly or disassembly of other of macromolecular structures or even other proteins so the point and we'll sh we'll show some pictures on that in just a minute um, when a new protein is is being developed it has to fold correctly in order to uh, have the right geometry sometimes it needs help and that's what uh, heat shock proteins tend to do now, if heat shock proteins are involved in helping hold a protein, other proteins um, and amino acid chains or peptides in cer certain uh, geometric space, then they also have other roles as well. And we'll talk about those again in just a minute. Now, um, there's a thing called heat shock factor. Uh, heat shock factors are the transcription factors that regulate the expression of heat shock proteins. In other words, let's say you do go to the sauna. Let's say you do start stimulating your body to create heat shock uh, proteins. Well, it's heat shock factors that start this process that um, begin to begin that transcription process. Um, <clears throat> It's seen in bacteria, it's seen in humans, uh, it's seen in virtually all living organisms. Uh, here's one uh, version of one. This is heat shock protein number 60. Uh, as you can see, there are six uh, major families, uh, the 40s, 60s, 70s, 90s, and 110s. Those are the, the Daltons, or the molecular weight of these. As you can see, it almost uh, appears to be like a, a ring and again, that may be something like a handcuff that's used to uh, guide and direct the uh, geometry of the protein. There are others as well. Um, <clears throat> again, very much focused on um, geometric, uh, the holding of uh, a protein in, in the correct geometric space. Now, <clears throat> What about cardiovascular? There has been a significant amount of cardiovascular uh, focus on these. Um, and again, I'll cover that in another probably two, maybe three videos uh, on the JAMA articles and the debate that they uh, tripped off. Just a brief comment about it. If you look at the actual dose response curve, um, and we'll talk about a dose response curve later, 
the cardiovascular impact would, if it were true and as large as was demonstrated in the, in the 2015 JAMA Internal Medicine article, um, going to the sauna would be um, maybe more important than uh, losing weight, maybe more important than uh, exercise, just incredibly important. And again, as I've mentioned, I'm a little bit, I, I think that there is a significant component here, but I'm skeptical that it's as big as it uh, appeared to be in that JAMA article. And again, we'll talk about why later in a different article. Now, <clears throat> so uh, immunity, as, as I've men we mentioned a couple of times, heat shock proteins are uh, important to aligning uh, the, again, geometric uh, shape of a protein. Well, that's also used in, in presentation. We'll talk about that actually right now, antigen presentation. Now, <clears throat> when something comes into the body, like a virus, um, there are several steps for the, that the body has to go through in order to uh, recognize that virus shell as an antigen or foreign. One is a thing called, uh, oh gosh, it, uh, there's a name of a, of a cell. I think we'll cover that a little bit later, uh, but there's a specific type of immune cell, antigen presenting cell. That's the name of it, I think. Um, and then that antigen presenting cell has a role of presenting uh, the portion of the virus, the portion of the um, virus shell to the T cells. When the T cells are presented that uh, peptide from the virus shell in a certain way by the uh, antigen presenting cell, they recognize that as foreign. And again, as uh, we've talked about in several other videos, there's a lot of places where that doesn't exactly happen correctly, like with rheumatoid arthritis, some of the inflammatory uh, uh, bowel diseases. And um, there's something that's going on, as we all know, with uh, cardiovascular inflammation, where um, the immune system is attacking our own plaque within the walls of our arteries. But again, I'm going down some bunny trails. Let's go back and continue the discussion about uh, heat shock proteins. So heat shock proteins are, um, because of their focus with uh, ge geometry and presentation of the protein, they are um, very much associated with uh, these antigen presenting uh, cells or presentation cells. So again, they get involved in helping present this in turn to the antigen presenting cell, which presents it to the T cell, so the T cell can recognize it as something that's foreign and therefore needs to be attacked. So <clears throat> let's go, go on down. Now, what does that have to do with autophagy? I mentioned autophagy in the title, and... Um, went through a lot of other uh, dots uh, to connect before I finally get here. And here there's only uh, two lines about autophagy. But think about it. Um, autophagy is a place where <clears throat> we recognize, our cells uh, recognize junk protein for the most part, but uh, other pieces of junk as well. Um, that protein is then presented to the lysosome, and the lysosome uh, is a packet uh, of proteins which is ready to be digested and dissolved. So again, <clears throat> heat shock proteins are not only involved in helping present uh, other protein, help other proteins form when the other uh, when those other proteins get denatured by heat or other. Uh, stressors. They help them reform. Denatured just means that the uh, geometric form has been um, has been changed. So for example, uh, some of you may re remember the picture that I showed in uh, the thumbnail of a recent video of fried eggs. 
When you fry eggs, basically you're denaturing the protein in the egg. Heat shock proteins, because of their role, uh, can come back and renature or renature or um, reconfigure proteins. Now, sometimes, obviously, with a fried egg, they couldn't remake a an unfried egg. Um, and at that point, then um, if the protein is that destroyed, then they will go ahead and present it to a lysosome. If that's a protein that they uh, that appears to be um, uh, from a viral infection, again, they're involved in presenting it to the antigen presentation uh, cells. So, <clears throat> again, there's a lot more interesting stuff about uh, heat shock proteins um, and cold shock proteins and UV uh, shock proteins uh, and several others. But again, we're getting on. Uh, I appreciate your interest as usual if you've made it this far and gotten this... Uh, um, this geeky with me. Thanks for your interest.